Hello and welcome back to another video on Unpack Technologies. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to adjust the accessibility settings on your macOS device. This will allow you to adjust the macOS experience to cater for whatever bet is best for your needs, allowing you to customize how it works to best suit the way you need the computer to run. It's a pretty simple process and it will allow you to customize and make the computer work for whatever's best for you. So let's get straight into it. Alright, so to adjust these settings, all we need to do is go down into System Preferences, um, down here. And then once we're in System Preferences, we'll open the Accessibility section. Now, this may look slightly different once you're eventually running macOS Ventura, um, but on Monterey and older, Accessibility is just located here. Um, on the newer version of Ventura, it should be down the side column somewhere. So if you click on Accessibility, You'll see it says here, accessibility features adapt your Mac to your individual needs. Your Mac can be customized to support your vision, hearing, physical motor, learning and literacy requirements. So it's essentially saying what this page allows you to do, as I mentioned before, making Mac OS work best for you and whatever you need it to adjust for to help your needs. Now the first thing I'm going to show you is down the bottom left here, it says show accessibility status in the menu bar. You can turn that on or off. If you turn it on, you'll see that it adds the little accessibility icon into the menu bar up here. If we click on that, you've got all your different uh, accessibility options that you have chosen to put here. Um, so for example, invert colors, you'll see that that's just inverted my display um, to the inverse colors or possibly a zoom function here. Um, it's not exactly set up properly yet, but um, that's an option or reduce transparency where you can see the transparency has gone on all of these menu options. Uh, these are just some of the options that you can access quickly from the menu bar if you choose to leave that setting on. So once we've gone over that, what we can have a look at here is the first section is called vision. So um, under vision, you've got a few different options here. So if you have some uh, vision uh, problems or um, you can't see things clearly, there is an option called voiceover. So voiceover provides spoken and braille descriptions of items on the computer screen and provides control of the computer through the use of the keyboard. So if you can't see it properly, voiceover will read out what is on the screen to you so that you can hear it. So you can see the toggle for voiceover is command F5. So if I click that here, You'll see to that it turns on. Now, okay, what I'm going to do here, now. I'm just going to turn it off now so I can talk. But you'll see what it did there is when it, when it was turned on, um, you'll see, as it just did again there, it starts speaking to you. So um, it starts reading out what's on the screen so that you know um, what's happening if you can't read it clearly. So hopefully that came through on the microphone that it was reading out. Um, but that's a very good um, feature if you need to be able to hear what is on the screen. And there's also a few options such as open voiceover training and then open voiceover utility. So some of these um, just here, you'll see it's opened another app called voiceover utility and this gives you the full customization of your voiceover and how it all works. So this is, if you're really into voiceover, you can customize this to exactly how you need it. Um, and yeah, that's really um, helpful if you need to use that feature. Um, so that is voiceover utility. Now, the next one is zoom. So this will allow you to zoom into your computer screen. So you'll see, um, if I tick use keyboard shortcuts to zoom, the keyboard shortcut to toggle zoom on is option command eight. So if I do that, you'll see there's now zoomed in the screen. So um, this is now moving around, zooming in what is happening on the display, which is quite interesting here. And I can zoom in by going option command 
equals sign that will zoom me in as you can see there and to zoom out it's just option command minus which will zoom me out and if I want to turn off altogether it's just the same way that I turned it on option command 8 which will zoom me right back out now you can also choose whether you want to use the scroll gesture with modify keys to zoom um, so that's also an option and you can change whether the zoom style is full screen split screen or picture in picture so what I just showed you before was full screen. If I select split screen uh, and I turn this on here, you'll see that it has a bit like what Windows does with the magnify. It adds it up the top as a bit of a split screen option, um, which can be quite handy. And the alternative option is picture in picture, which now that that's on, you'll see that it's like a little box around where the mouse is and you can move it around so that you can see what is going on so you can change that all here which is quite good and then once again option command 8 to turn it off and then you can also choose a secondary display if you have one and then you've also got the option of hover text so if you hold down command uh, you can view a larger text version of the item that's under your mouse pointer all right, so the next option is now displays. So we've got lots of options under display. I'll try and go through this quite quickly. It's probably pretty self-explanatory. You can invert the colors uh, and a classic invert will um, do something slightly differently to what you might be used to. There's reduce motion, which is supposed to reduce how much motion is happening on the screen. Um, you've got increased contrast, which um, sort of makes it look like older versions of Windows in a sense, like Windows 98 and things like that. So it gives me those vibes. Um, we can reduce transparency, uh, differentiate without color, show window title options, uh, sorry, icons, and show toolbar button shapes. And then we've got the menu bar size, which is default or large, although for some reason clicking that isn't changing. That's interesting. And then we've got display contrast, which, uh, whoa, um, that's pretty wild there but if I start turning that up you'll see that the contrast just really blows out towards the end there that's really interesting um, seeing how that happens and then you can also change the pointer from large to small um, and then you can also customize uh, what the outline of the pointer looks like and then also um, the pointer fill color so I've sort of made that a bit of a grayish color there I can even change that uh, to be white it's interesting why um, so yeah and then you can reset it if you're not happy and then you've also got color filters so um, you can decide to filter out certain colors um, if you don't want that so I've just turned on a grayscale here makes the screen look very boring without any colors at all so that's really uh, interesting how that works and then you can just filter out certain colors of your choosing we'll go back to grayscale there all right we're, we can then move on to spoken content so you can choose your system voice hello my name is gordon i'm an australian english voice hopefully you can hear that you can read out um what voice you want hello my name is karen i am an australian english voice so you got lots of options there you can change your speaking rate the volume all that sort of stuff um, we've got all these options for speaking announcements uh, and all that sort of stuff. You can go through that if you want any more details. We've also got descriptions here. You'll see there's an option for playing audio descriptions when available. So that just allows a spoken description of visual content in media um, whenever it's available. So that's a good option if you need that. All right, so that wraps up the vision section. So now... Um, under the hearing section, you've got a couple of options um, if you um, need to be able to hear things better. So one of the options here is to flash the screen when an alert sound occurs. So if you can't hear um, very well, if you turn that on, um, whenever you have an alert, it will flash the screen like so. Um, hopefully that's showing up in the screen recording and it gives you a visual um, representation that there's something um, problematic there. Um, so that's a good option there and you can also play stereo audio as mono if you need to and you can change more system volume settings in the sound preferences on system preferences and I have made a video about how to change the sound settings in Mac OS so be sure to check that out if you want to adjust finer sound settings on your computer 
Uh, moving on, we've got captions here. Um, so you can just decide whether you want uh, any subtitles or captions. You can change the way that they look. Um, like so, you can even add extra options and really customize them uh, to your liking. Um, here it's really, really interesting seeing how that works. Um, so if you need captions, that's an option. And then that, that wraps it up for hearing. Uh, and then we've got motor. So we've got voice control, um, which allows you to edit and interact with your computer by speaking to it. So uh, if you enable it, um, you can... Uh, you need to unlock the system preferences. Once it's enabled, it will start listening to my voice and trying to control the computer. So, for example, if I go minimize this window, you'll see that that's worked there. So, you'll see that that is in action there. I'll just turn that off for now so I don't accidentally trigger it. And then you can see show hints, and then you can also select whether it plays a sound when the command is recognized. And then you can add some extra commands here. Um, so you got lots of options there and you can add your own, uh, custom ones, um, and go through and choose what it does. All right. And then under keyboard, here you have the option to control the computer just with a keyboard. So, um, if you enable that, you can see that clicking on the keyboard will then adjust how the computer is run. So you can see to move forward, you click tab. Um, like it's doing there as I click tab through everything and then you've got all your different options on how you can run the computer uh, and then once again like with all these things you can see additional keyboard preferences in the keyboards um, pane of system preferences and then you've got also extra options and you can add and see all the commands here so that's really good uh, under pointer control, um, you've just you can change the way that your pointer works. Once again, you can change all the more of these um, mouse settings in the um, mouse pane on system preferences. Um, let me know if you'd like to see a video about how to change the mouse and trackpad settings on your Mac OS device, because I'm more than happy to make that if you'd like to see that. But yeah, in the uh, mouse options, you can just see you can change the scrolling speed and then you've also got all these things like double click speed and then spring loading delay all that sort of stuff and then you've got also some alternative control methods as well so lots of options here um the last one for motor is switch control so um you can enable switch control if you would like um if i unlock this here um you'll see um this is what switch control looks like and it's a little bit like, um, uh, it's a little bit like assistive touch on, uh, iOS, uh, probably a bit more options here, but it sort of functions in a similar way where you can go into, for example, pointer, and then you can say for it to move. Um, so you'll see there, there's sort of it moving or you can do a left click, um, all those sorts of things. Uh, all options in here, um, which is quite good. Um, so, yep, yeah, that's switch control. You can change it from a light or dark appearance. Um, you've also got options for what the panel looks like, and this opens a whole separate app here as well. Some of these apps I never even knew existed. Like, um, this is the first time I've seen the panel editor here. So, it's really amazing how many new apps you find while you're digging through these settings menus. That's why I love making these videos. You always learn new things in them. So, that's really interesting seeing that panel editor. And then you've also got typing um, changes switches, um, where you can add more switches if you would like. So, uh, if I... Uh, if I, for example, click uh, the down arrow, uh, arrow on my keyboard, I can choose an action that it does uh, in the switch control. And then under navigation, I've also got some more options here, and there's so much to customize. So you can really get into these menus if you want to see them. And yeah, really try and dig deep and uh, yeah, choose what you want to adjust. All right, and then there's just a couple more general ones at the bottom before we wrap up. So there's an option to enable type to Siri. Um, so if I turn that on and we activate Siri, what I can do here is type. So I'll say, 
Hi, how are you today? Put that in. I'm happy to be here. And you'll see that typing to Siri works quite well. So if I ask a very basic question, such as what um, five times five, it's twenty-five. You'll see it opens up the calculator and it does the calculations for me. So that's how type to Siri works. You can just type um, your responses to Siri instead of saying it out loud. And then you can change more Siri preferences once again in the main Siri section of the system settings app. And then finally, you've got the shortcuts. And this is where you can toggle all your accessibility shortcuts. So if I turn on accessibility here, we'll go option command F5 to toggle it on. Shortcuts. It opens up accessibility shortcuts and you can choose Use the tab what you want to turn on. And press space to um, and so... That's all your options for the accessibility shortcuts there. And once again, if you've got it ticked to show it in the menu bar, you can just go up here and choose what you want to do anyway. So you've got lots of options there. Um, really good um, just to be able to choose from those options. And yeah, really get your head around uh, all the options here because there's just so much to look at um, in these settings pages. So yeah. Um, that about wraps it up um, for the accessibility features on your Mac OS device and how to customise them and choose um, which ones you want to make Mac OS run the best for your personal needs. Hopefully this video was helpful and yeah, gave you some good insight onto how to adjust Mac OS to make it work the best way that it can work for you. And let me know in the comments below if there's any other videos you would like to see in regards to Mac OS settings and options and yeah, any real video suggestions you have for me, just let me know in the comments below because I'm more than happy to make them if you would like to see them. Other than that, thanks for watching this video on Unpack Technologies. Don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video.